So, I kind of love Rings of Power. As of writing this, there are only three episodes out, but damn has it pulled me into its world. All the advertising and outrage around the show gave me the impression that it would be pretty bad, or at least just filled with American politics, which I wasn't looking forward to. This video will be broken down into three main sections. First, let's talk about the characters and the story. Now, I love fantasy, but for someone who loves fantasy, I've consumed so little Lord of the Rings media. I've seen some of the original trilogy, and when I was a kid, I really liked this Lord of the Rings RTS game. Oh, and I really liked Shadow of Mordor. That game was awesome. So my experience with Lord of the Rings is not what you would call a massive fan. There are three distinct storylines so far, and a slowly branching off fourth storyline. There's Galadriel, the elf general who's hell-bent on finding Sauron when the rest of the elves just want peace. There's Arendir, an elf watchman who's on the ground discovering secrets and defending the humans. There's Nori, a half-foot who dreams of adventure and greater things. And the new storyline that's building involves Elrond, an elf who's helping to build the forge that will later create the titular Rings of Power. I'm enjoying all of these leads and the rest of the characters. I'm enjoying the split perspectives as we see the world descending into war once again, even with the two elf characters. Seeing the kings of the elves denying the threat and then cutting to Arendir discovering the orcs is really well made. It's really cool. I really like it. Regarding any controversy, I have no idea what's canon or how characters are supposed to look or be, so I literally could not give a shit. I'm actually really impressed that it's dealing with things like racism in the context of the Lord of the Rings world. I'm sure it was pretty hard to get that stuff past, you know? Let's move on to world building. Oh my god, there's so much world building. Little bits of extra detailing conversation or bits of the background that expand the world. Actually, section three was like set and costume design, and those contribute to world building, so I'm just gonna talk about them together. So this is sections two and three. Jesus Christ. The sets and costumes are gorgeous. I'm so glad they spent the money to fully realize this world. I really wanna know what sections are set and what sections are CG because I think they've built some really elaborate sets. All the CG is fantastic, I, I can't tell. Amazon Prime is stupid, so I really can't get you the specific scenes that I wanna talk about. But there are so many little details in the environment that bring it to life. For example, there's a scene where an elf is climbing a ladder and the ladder looks like it's wood that's been grown into the shape of a ladder. That's something the elves would definitely do. They wouldn't cut a tree and build it like we would. Another example, is in the human town. There's this little pub and the back door has stains from the rust as it's been worn over time. It's just the detail is really really fantastic. I could go on all day but I'll stop there. These are standard things. If you love world building like me but a lesser show just wouldn't have them in it. They wouldn't bother or wouldn't have the money to go all out with the detail. At least one person on the staff really cared for this project and this world. This is the kind of detail I'd love to see from the new One Piece adaptation because if it doesn't have it it's not gonna be good. Now onto the costuming. It's fucking fantastic. Like, look at this scene between Elrond and the Dwarf Prince Durin. Look how distinct and rugged the dwarves look. Their thick shirts and armor decorated with culturally relevant ornaments and engravings. And then compare them with Elrond in his light singular robe. But note how fine the details are on it. Each race is represented through everything about their design. Even within the same race, each person's wearing a different outfit and it makes everyone seem unique and individual. Like look at these orcs. Both of them have very clear, distinct styles while sticking to the same general aesthetic. Their outfits are very clearly made from the animals that they've hunted. You can see how poor the leather was tanned too. Just looking at this one screenshot, you can infer so much about them and their culture. The one on the left seems to be bulking out his appearance and covering every inch of his body to protect his potentially weaker frame from the sunlight. He's also clearly not the one in charge here. He's kind of hunched over and, you know, not right up there. Whereas the one on the right cares much more about appearances. Look at his fancy hat! I've seen some complaints that the pacing is off and too slow, but personally the speed is perfect for me. The calm before the storm, slowly building in intensity while we get to know all the characters and their stories. So once shit does hit the proverbial fan, we will be already so invested. Okay, last example of world building, because I can't help myself. The elves carving the dead into their trees so that they will always be part of something living. Mwah, chef's kiss. The immortal elves doing something like this as a way to not part with their friends who should never have had to die is really great. It's just the detail, man. The detail we get into the Harfoot traditions and what that says about their way of life and culture is incredibly interesting. I only found out recently that the Harfoots are meant to be the predecessors to Hobbits, but the Hobbits aren't nomadic and the Harfoots are. So I wonder what happened there. I wanna find out. That's how you know this show is doing something right. As I've said, I'm not a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, but I am a huge fantasy fan. So maybe this is all just standard in the Lord of the Rings world, but the fact that the show is pulling me deeper and deeper into the world every episode is a sign that it's well made. 
I think anyway. Uh, the only main complaint is that I would like Arendir and Galadriel to show a little more emotion in their faces, you know? They're supposed to be stoic, but I still think they should emote more. <laughs> But I had the same issue with Dream from the Sandman and Batman from the new Batman, so maybe it's just me. Maybe I just don't like stoic characters. Anyway, I just wanted to make this video because I think that the team behind Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, has knocked it out the park, and all the videos I see on YouTube are incredibly negative, and I just have no idea why. I personally can't wait to see what happens next, and I hope that they get enough viewers to continue the show, because it's so good. To me, it's really good.